What's your favorite kind of cookie to make? I'm a big fan of gingerbread. I love turning out the exact same shape over and over and over and over. You don't even have to be an artist to make gingerbread cookies come out just right. But the best works of art don't come from a mold. They're unique, original, one of a kind. And the greatest work of all time is you. God made you to reflect a little bit of who he is to the world around you. But he made you to reflect him in a way that's entirely different from your brother, your mom, your neighbor, or even that popular kid at school. God made only one you, and he made you on purpose. No one else in the entire world can fill that perfect spot he crafted just for you. And when you discover who God made you to be, you can make a greater difference in this world than you could ever imagine. That's why individuality is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Hey everybody, I'm Graham, and I've got to say, I'm super excited about today because we are talking about one of my favorite things. Candy! <laughs> Have you ever been to one of those candy stores that lets you put all of your favorite candies into one little bag? You can mix your jelly beans with gummy bears and top it all off with a handful of M&Ms. The M's stand for mmm. 
Hmm. And it's all made only for you, your one-of-a-kind candy bag. Everyone's different, after all. Some of you may like hot candy. Ha 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 ha! Or maybe sour's your way to go. I need some water, please. Or maybe you don't like candy at all. Hmm. Now that's a good radish. We're all different, and that's not a bad thing. That's what individuality is all about. Individuality is discovering who you were meant to be so you can make a difference. We're all created to be individuals. That's why we all like different kinds of candy. Hey, what if we were created out of candy? Like what if my head could be made out of jelly beans? And maybe some, 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 some peppermints for eyes, yeah. Ah, uh, Laffy Taffy nose. Twizzler mouth. Twizzler? Twizzler? And of course, some hair. Looks just like me. Okay. Maybe we weren't created out of candy, but we were created. And in today's story, we'll learn about our amazing creator. Sounds fun, right? What? I was hungry. See you soon. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 26 through 28. In the beginning, God took nothing and made everything. From darkness, God called out light. God poured out waters and stretched the sky far overhead like an unpainted canvas. He shaped dry land and canyons and great mountain ranges, and then decked them out with trees and vines and plants of every kind. God spun the moon and sun and stars and planets out into space. And then he filled the oceans with fish and the sky with birds. God thought up an amazing variety of animals to crawl and hop and race over the earth. All of this was incredible, unbelievable, the most artistic show of power ever. God made complex atoms and cells smaller than the eye can see, all the way up to vast spaces stretching across the universe farther than we can imagine. And yet, all of this was just a warm-up to God's most spectacular creation, people. People. It's true. We're made of the same atoms and cells and elements as rocks and plants and animals. But unlike anything else in God's creation, we are made in God's image. Then God said, Let us make human beings so that they are like us. Let them rule over the fish in the seas and the birds in the sky. Let them rule over the livestock and all the wild animals and let them rule over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created human beings in his own likeness. He created them to be like himself. He created them as male and female. You are made in God's image. Now that does not mean God shares your eye color or your freckles or even your quirky smile, but it does mean that you were designed for God to shine through you. You were made to show the world God's love, God's grace and mercy, God's joy, God's peace, God's kindness, God's wisdom. You and every person you'll ever meet are of infinite value because you're made in the image of God. And here's what's even more amazing. 
God didn't design us to turn into a bunch of little robots who look and act the same when we follow him. Instead, the more time you spend with God, asking him to transform your thoughts and words and choices, the more you become uniquely you. As you follow Jesus and reflect God's light more clearly, you'll be able to do the things that God has designed for you and no one else. So, next time you look in the mirror, remember, you're looking at the image of God and no one in this world can reflect him just the way you do. When God created the world, he saved the best for last. People. He made us to be like him. He made us in his image. Maybe that means God looks like us. Or maybe it means God made us with different qualities that could only come from him. Maybe God made you creative, like he's creative. Ooh, or maybe you're really smart because a smart God made you that way. You could be patient or kind, confident, or peaceful. And you could top it off with a handful of joyfulness. God is all of those things. And he's given them to each of us in all kinds of different combinations. So here's the one thing to remember today. You were made in God's image. Only you were made the way you are. You're one of a kind. There. I'm done with my new candy self-portrait. What do you think? Not bad. I look delicious. I'll see you next time.